Hi, I'm Faith from the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center, and thanks for joining me for today's virtual story time. Now this week, our distance learning theme is planets. So today we're reading a story called The Story of Space, a first book about our universe, written by Katherine Barr and Steve Williams and illustrated by Amy Husband. And I love this story because it includes planets and so much more of our universe. So let's get started. <clears throat> now, as we go through this book, there's a little timeline down here in the corner. So on every page, I'm going to tell you how long ago we're talking about in this part of the story, okay? All right. So this is 13.8 billion years ago. Before the Big Bang, there was nothing at all. No galaxies, no stars, no planets, and no life. No time, no space, no light, and no sound. Then, suddenly, it all began. A scalding hot speck appeared and instantly grew bigger. Everything in that tiny speck was pushed violently outward by a new force called dark energy. This big bang created the amazing place we call our universe. Okay, now we're 13.8 to 13.1 billion years ago. This blisteringly hot blast began to cool. Bits from the blast formed tiny things called atoms, which made gas and dust. The gas twisted and clumped, getting hotter and hotter until it burned and shone. In these twirling, swirling clouds of color, the first stars were born. Clusters of new stars formed millions of galaxies, sparkling silently until light from these stars shot across space, only a faint glow from the Big Bang, Big Bang lit the blackness. Okay, now we're 13.1 to 4.5 billion years ago. Over time, trillions of stars lit up the universe. Like us, stars are born, grow old, and die. Unlike us, they live for billions of years, so many of these first stars still sparkle today. During their lifetimes, stars twinkle in rainbow colors. The hottest look bluish, while cooler stars are white, yellow, and red. Really big stars are called giants, and smaller ones are called dwarfs. Dwarf red stars are the most common of all. When they die, some stars grow into huge red giants before shrinking back to white dwarfs that fade and disappear. Other massive stars explode and collapse into strange black holes that suck everything inward. Okay, we're about 4.5 billion years ago now. A very long time after the Big Bang, a bright yellow star, our sun, was born. This burning ball of gas is so huge that a million Earths would fit inside it. The sun is incredibly hot, with a fiery furnace in its core. Cooler black spots shift across its surface. A fierce solar wind loops and flows outward toward deep space. Our sun is just one of billions of other stars in our, our galaxy, the Milky Way. Okay, we're about 4.5 billion years ago now. Over time, dust and gas left over from the birth of the sun clumped together to make planets. Close to the sun, so here's the sun, right? Close to the sun, dust formed the rocky planets of Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. In the icy blackness far from the sun's warm glow, way out here, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune were made from dust swirling with gas and ice. All these new planets whizzed at a breathtaking speed around their yellow star. Our solar system had been born. Okay, we're still about 4.5 billion years ago. As well as planets, lumps of rock and ice called comets hurtled around the sun. Asteroids made of chunks of rock and metal also circled the sun. Many of these crashed into Earth's surface. 
They made it so hot that the rocks melted into endlessly bubbling lakes of lava. Soon af after Earth was formed, a planet-sized asteroid ripped through space and smashed into the globe. Rocks blasted off into space, eventually sticking together to become our cold, dusty moon. About four billion years ago now. The smash that made our moon was so big that it knocked Earth sideways. So our planet began to lean away from its star. As the Earth spins on its axis, different areas endlessly turn toward and away from the sun. This creates cycles of night and day around our world. So here's, here's the sun. Here's the part of the Earth that's facing the sun. You can see it's daylight. It's the daytime. And on this half of the globe that is facing away from the sun, it is nighttime. Okay, we're about 3.8 billion years ago to the present. So everything from 3. Point billion years ago all the way up till now. Temperatures on Earth began to drop and its surface of boiling lava cooled to solid rock. It rained for thousands of years, creating vast oceans. In these seas, the first forms of life appeared. These early cells began to produce oxygen, the gas we all breathe today. As oxygen spread across the globe, it triggered an explosion of life that lasted for billions of years. Sometimes asteroids and comets smashed into Earth, almost destroying all living things. But incredibly, some animals and plants survived and have flourished. Just three million years ago, new animals evolved that are changing the world. Humans. So I'm gonna hold this up so you can get a really good view that beautiful picture. Look at all those different kinds of life on our planet, including us here. Humans are a kind of animal too. It's very exciting. 500 million years ago to today. Life on Earth depends on our atmosphere, the thin blanket of gases that wraps around the globe and traps warmth and the oxygen that humans and other living things need. But in space, it is bitterly cold with no air. The atmospheres of other planets are freezing, poisonous, suffocating, or all three. Venus has yellow acid fog, while bolts of lightning shoot through red storms on Jupiter. Saturn has rings of ice and raging orange winds. Humans are still trying to understand these planets and everything that spins around them. Five thousand years ago to today. Astronomers first explored space by gazing at the stars and invented telescopes to help them study the skies. They found craters on the moon and discovered Saturn's rings. They, dis they realized that the universe is mysterious and constantly changing, but over time they began to explain and understand it using math and maps. Astronomers mapped the stars in our galaxy the Milky Way, and gazed at billions of other galaxies stretching like cobwebs across the sky. They saw moons orbiting planets and planets orbiting stars. Today. Astronomers figured out that everything in the universe is controlled by strange forces. Dark energy is still pushing everything in space apart, while gravity pulls everything together. The more massive the object, the stronger its gravity. On Earth, gravity stops us from falling off the planet. In space, it tugs planets around stars and forms galaxies by pulling stars around supermassive black holes. Black holes are strange, dark places where gravity is strongest of all. So powerful that even light gets sucked in. Nineteen forty two to nineteen sixty nine. Now that's not very long ago. I bet some of your grandparents at least were alive around that around then. My parents were alive around then. Eventually scientists figured out how to escape Earth's gravity by blasting off in a rocket. The space race had begun. First animals, then people, were strapped in for the ride. 
The first man sent into space was named Yuri, and the first woman was Valentina, both of them from Russia. It took them less than two hours to orbit the globe. Then in 1969, the world held its breath while the American Apollo 11 space mission set off to do something new and extraordinary. Land on the moon. 1969. The astronauts wriggled out of the small door of the Eagle spacecraft. For the first time, they stood on something in the universe other than Earth. They could bounce up and down on the powdery surface because the moon, being a lot smaller than Earth, has weak gravity. The astronauts had practiced in swimming pools in their spacesuits because floating in water is a bit like floating on the or is a bit like walking on the moon. The astronauts took photographs, collected moon dust, and phoned home. They left footprints in the dust, and undisturbed by air or water, these human marks remain. But the astronauts themselves rocketed home to planet Earth. 1970s to today. Countries began to work together to explore the universe. They built the International Space Station where people carry out all sorts of experiments in outer space. Spacecraft with robots have landed on Venus, Mars, and even on a comet. Space probes have orbited Mercury, Saturn, and Jupiter, while others still rocket on a one-way ticket into deep space. Hundreds of satellites orbit the Earth, but some are human space trash. Or some are human space trash, but others take pictures that help us understand the weather and bounce signals to Earth that make television and telephones work. Look at all of those satellites. Mm. And the International Space Station, of course. Now this is talking about the future. The biggest challenges to exploring space are time and distance. Just to reach the edge of our own galaxy would take about 4 billion years. Soon spaceships will be built so that people can rocket off on vacation and astronauts hope to land and survive on Mars. One of the most exciting challenges of all is to search other moons and planets for signs of life. It is unlikely that we are totally alone. No one knows what we will find as we unravel the mysteries of the extraordinary place we call space. Oh, and that is the end of our story. So thanks for sticking with me for this one. It was kind of long, but I really enjoyed The Story of Space, a first book about our universe by Katherine Barr and Steve Williams. So thanks for joining me for today's virtual story time. Keep your eyes on starhop.com slash blog for more lessons and hands-on activities, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.